Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to finish up the uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, we're going to kind of do, it's like vector, and then we have a uh, pixel layer, and uh, we're going to do some painting over it. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one, in the first episode, we uh, go through and we do the uh, outline of this. So if you haven't watched that, uh, you know, watch that first, or if you know how to do outlines already, and you're confident, then you can just keep watching this. Uh, the one thing I want to show you is I did crop this down from this one. So I went in and uh, cropped it. The common misconception with Affinity Designer is that this crop tool will crop your, um, you know, your document down. That's not the case. It's a vector crop tool. So if you want to crop, uh, you, you got to have Affinity Photo, and you're going to go to uh, Edit. You're going to go to File, and then Edit in Photo. That's going to pop it up in the photo. You're going to click the Crop Tool. Uh, you're going to crop it down, and then, and then we're going to uh, File, and we're going to Edit in Designer. That's going to shoot us back to Designer, and uh, I could have cropped that a little better, but you get the point. Uh, the only other way to do that, hit Command R to get the ruler up. That way you can kind of get an idea of the size. And you're going to have to go to Document Setup in the corner here. Uh, I believe, cancel. Yeah, I believe you have to be on the arrow key at the top, and then that will pop up. Document Setup, and you can play with the uh, dimensions here, but it's going to be little rough doing that so anyway moving on we're gonna jump in here now that it's cropped uh, we do need a reference image okay I'm gonna get rid of the rulers because we don't need them now um, and basically what we're gonna do uh, that's the paint layer and then we have a couple layers of uh, vector that we build up on this. Okay, so now we just got the silhouette that we're working with here, and I'm gonna show you how to start uh, building this up. But first, we're gonna need that reference photo back. So, uh, real quick, I'm just gonna shrink this and put this in the corner, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a trick in a second on how to set up your reference a little better. Um, so first thing we wanna do is get this red laid in for the uh, chest piece. So we're gonna go to the pen tool. We're gonna go to the smart tool, just like we did with the um, uh, the outline. And I'm just gonna do this. And we're gonna fill it in with the red. Okay, so now this is why we do the outline because you don't want to be coming in and now that you did the black outline, you don't want to be trying to take that pen tool and click and like try to do another outline of the outline. So basically now that we have our outline, we can do large uh, areas and we can mask them out. So let's go, so our main outline is right here. This is the curve we just drew for the chest plate. If I drop this under there, and then let me delete that, because this is our old one. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not going to delete it just in case. i got to show you something later. But as you can see, I dropped that under. And now we have... Um, now it's being masked. So now we can come in. You know, move this around. And now what we can do because we don't want that just all bright red. We want to do a gradient there. So I can click on the curve, click on fill, and we can go over to gradient. And in gradient, I'm gonna make the white black, and then we're gonna click on this tool right here, which is the, uh, well, I guess it's called fill tool. I thought it was called gradient tool. Uh, and then we can kind of adjust our color here and that 
is going to be the basics of how we do that. So let's do another layer here. Let's now kind of, I'm just going to roughly put in like the uh, yellow piece here. That, we're going to make it yellow. And again, I'm going to do the fill. Put a gradient. Make that black. Because overall, we want this to still look like a silhouette. Um, and now, as you can see, it made it over top of the uh, chest piece, but it's still under the main one, so it's going to be uh, masked out. What we can also do is, I believe, let me just, nope, never mind. So we can group them now. And then that way, similar to what I did here, you can have your own group so we can you know, turn that on and off. So that's the basics of how you're gonna get the first like base layer in. You're gonna go through and you're gonna identify the parts that, uh, you just, sorry about that. Let me just kind of get this lined up here. So you're gonna identify the parts that are around the edges that you need to do. Now, this belt here, I don't think we need to do the belt on the inside because as you can see, the belt only pops out a little bit there, but the rest of it is within the silhouette. So for that, we don't really need to do that. That can be a brand new layer that lays on top and it would be done similarly. We would bring this back, turn this off, and now we would do this, you know, we would trace over this part. Uh, same with the armband, that didn't really go outside of the edges, I kind of kept it close. Uh, let me show you, this is getting a little bit in the way, I'm gonna show you a quick trick with this. Uh, let's kind of define the size that we want to use. So I think like that, size would be good for a reference image. Um, let's put our reference image on top of that. And then we can drag that in. We can drag that in similar to how we did with the uh, silhouette there. And now we can scale and move this piece around. And if we're working on uh, just that chest piece, now we can just have this to the side and uh, we'll be good to go. So the next thing I did is uh, I went to back to my pen tool. Let's get a dark, like a dark red. And I went through and I put some of these strokes and then we could do the pressure a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of an edge. But, um, you know, I kind of drew in where these lines would be and then did a, uh, a little highlight to some of them where the highlights were, uh, were very, where you could tell they were going to be real bright. So, I mean, that, that's real quick, but that's basically, uh, what I did. And you're going to get it to a certain point where it's going to look like... Okay, so you're going to keep building up your layers until you have something similar to this. Um, you know, I put a little... Some of the, some of the parts that are... Uh, you know, it's going to be up to you if you want to put it here. I chose to put a little bit there, but I wasn't liking the light here. Uh, that's going to be up to you. So you want to get kind of to around here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to do a pixel layer that's going to bring it, you know, to its final. And uh, let me kind of show you how I did that. So down here, we're going to make a new pixel layer. And then we're going to go to the pixel persona. We're going to click on brushes. Uh, we're going to go to brushes and again, if uh, just like the other video, if you don't see 
something that I'm going to, you want to go to View, Studio, and then brushes are right here, or if I accidentally say another uh, window, that is where it's at. We're going to want to decrease the file size, I'm sorry, the brush size. So with the first time I go in here, I like to use a grunge brush and I like to keep it, you know, not big, big, but you know, fairly big. Uh, but I like this, um, if you click here, you can see all the different kind of brushes. I like to start with the grunge brush because it gives it a little texture and I think it helps block in better. The other thing you want to do is if you have a tablet, um, I'm going to be drawn on the tablet here. I actually use a thing called AstroPad. So my uh, iPad, you know, I can draw on the screen with my iPad. Uh, this is what you got to click to get uh, pressure sensitivity. So we're on our pixel layer and I'm going to start kind of coming in. I'm going to look over here and I'm going to see like, okay, there's a lot of light here. The light kind of comes here and then we got like a little zigzag here and then some on the chest. So what I'm going to do is kind of draw in some of that and it's going to be rough. And I know this looks really bad right now, but Bear with me for one quick second. Got some down here. Okay, so now that we got those highlights, and again, those are just really rough, um, we wanna change the uh, layer opacity, or I'm sorry, the layer um, mode, and kinda go through, and I usually go with uh, overlay and stuff like this, but sometimes soft light, just kinda choose uh, one that you think will work good and then what I like to do is I go to the eraser and then make the eraser the same as what the pencil was so I can erase with that grunge so now I'm gonna kind of go in and I'm gonna start to clean this up a little bit and I'm gonna bounce back and forth uh, between these two and you know, I'm going to get an approximation of what we're looking for. And, and I'm going to kind of go through, I'm going to do that for the uh, the belt. You know, we got the highlights. We're going to put the highlights in the belt, the, the, you know, the belt, whatever. Anything that needs highlights, you know, that's a little bright, but you get the point. This is how I start getting that texture on there. And then we can go to, we can do another pixel layer for the darks, or, I mean, you can keep it on overlay. This is gonna be however you wanna do it. We can go to like a real dark red here, and you know, we can start laying in some shadows. It's now the only issue with this is when we go to erase, we're erasing both the highlights and the shadows. So it is a little smarter to make another pixel layer and then uh, again make that overlay or soft light or kind of whatever you were using and then go in, you know, darken everything up and kind of do it. So I, that's about it. This is obviously real sloppy, but this is how I finished this piece off and I hope this helps you. I hope, uh, you know, it was easy to learn. Uh, like I said, last video, I've been off YouTube for about two years, but I'm going to try to record uh, three videos in a row today. And then um, I'm hoping to be back like at least one a week with Affinity and I have some other uh, videos that I got coming. So, you know, do the like and subscribe thing if you guys want and I'll see you guys next video.